What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. First off, I want to thank you for your support on my latest videos. We made gaming news headlines worldwide in the best way possible, which was with no rumors, no leaks, just investigation and discovery. So I just want to give a big shout out to you guys, the viewers, for liking, subscribing, and sharing the videos out. I really appreciate it. Now for today's big video, we have a lot of awesome in-depth information regarding Switch 2's full specs along with new confirmed and real information regarding features for the console and we'll also touch on that report from Bloomberg on the Switch 2's screen and my thoughts on that. Every single piece of information that will be covered in this video will be linked and sourced in the description and the idea is to provide as clear as possible information to you guys a lot of the time, especially with Switch 2 videos, you'll get some surface level information without details or correct sources. So hopefully we'll all be on the same page when this video is completed. That is, of course, if you watch the entire video. Now, the Switch 2 tech specs have been a mystery ever since it was first rumored. However, in the last year or so, we've gotten a lot more information on the range of what the specs could be and even some more exact details from rumors and speculation. Lately, there has been discussion and confusion though on the power range of the Switch 2 with some places saying PlayStation 4 level on power, but we have to be 100% clear that Nintendo still hasn't announced or shown the Switch 2 yet. So any rumor and even report from a credible site regarding specs should be taken with a grain of salt until it's confirmed by Nintendo since these rumors and reporting sites have indeed been right and wrong in the past. So in regards to this PlayStation 4 level of power statement, which actually has no real backing in fact, besides some statements by Activision's Bobby Kotick back in reveal court documents in 2022 or so, when he said that the Switch 2 would be in the range of the 8th gen of consoles. But it has to be noted that this information is currently outdated, and on top of that, we have to remember that a spec sheet of data won't tell you that much as to what you will see on the screen. Even the Switch 1, which runs on a downclock Tegra X1 processor from 2015 at about 400 gigaflops while docked, has continued to punch above its weight for years and has more modern features and tech in it than the PlayStation 4 had in 2013. The issue the Switch has is simply that it was released at a time where mobile tech hadn't advanced enough to give it a true PS4 range of performance on your TV while docked. But some games, like Doom Eternal for example, were able to come extremely close despite the console being 4.5 times less powerful than the PlayStation 4 while docked. It's safe to say that in 2024, that we can expect not only a much more powerful advanced Switch, with all the latest mobile tech advances from nearly 10 years since the Maxwell-based Tegra X1 processor was released, but also we should fully expect that whatever the spec sheet says on paper in 2024 versus the spec sheet of a 2013 PlayStation 4 won't be comparable at all, especially from the mobile side. In addition to this, Nintendo Switch 2 has a major advantage of being a closed platform with its own singular APIs and software for developers to focus on and will not just be a portable PC like the Steam Deck and the Ion Neo. Or even though those are amazing devices in their own right, they are more of a jack of all trades, master of none due to their inherent open-ended PC nature. The Switch 2 will also be a device that will be able to upclock itself to likely a much higher level of speed while docked, and with the latest fabrication process of 4 nanometers being the new standard for mobile devices as of 2023, the Switch 2 has the potential to not just double clock speeds while docked due to this, but my estimate is that they'll be able to get around 2.5 times the clock speeds while docked, giving it a much wider range of performance on your TV, which was something Switch 1 was more limited in due to the high heat and high power consumption of the original 20 nanometer Tegra X1 processor, which every switch has to basically be tied to and limited by, even with the revisions besides battery life since there was no pro model of the Nintendo Switch. So with the Switch 2 in 2024, Nintendo has an amazing amount of options to choose from to power the console. However, first up, before we get into the specs, we have to clarify a often misreported and misunderstood statement by Nvidia CEO Jensen Wang 
about their partnership with Nintendo. And keep in mind clearly that I personally actually do prefer Nvidia over AMD at this point since they undisputedly make the best GPUs on the market and I personally own an RTX 4090, but for the sake of clarity and the specs discussion, I simply have to point this out or this wouldn't be an honest video talking about the Switch 2 specs. So bearing that in mind, back on November 10th, 2016, right after Nintendo announced their partnership with Nvidia to provide the Tegra X1 for the Switch, Nvidia had an earnings call with their investors and there was a lot of excitement, of course, at the time for Nvidia to be partnered with Nintendo for the first time. And while Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, was taking questions about this partnership with Nintendo, he was talking about how exciting the potential of the Switch was, but at the very end, he said the main part, which many people reported incorrectly, mind you, and I'll show the exact quote on the screen here, but in terms of the Nintendo-NVIDIA partnership, he said, and I quote, I think this is a relationship that will likely last two decades, and I'm super excited about it. That's basically all he said. So he used the words and phrase, I think, and the word likely, which indicates that there was no partnership confirmed beyond just the Switch 1. Now that's not saying they won't use Nvidia for Switch 2 at all, of course. And like I said, I would prefer they did stay with Nvidia at this point, but it's not a promise backed up by a contract that we know about. More so, it was an assumption that Nintendo would stay partnered with Nvidia for years after the Switch was gone. Now, of course, if Nvidia announced a partnership with Nintendo publicly, like how Microsoft did with Nintendo, about bringing Call of Duty to Nintendo in the future, it would have been a different story. But generally speaking, due to how technology advances, especially with mobile devices, normally it's a case-by-case -case basis for vendors to decide which tech they want for a new device. Just like with Sony and Microsoft beforehand, they went with Nvidia for one console each and then moved to AMD because AMD has provided them with exactly what they needed for their consoles in the way that they wanted it. So with that out of the way, we will be exploring two options for the Switch 2 in terms of the SoC. Since no doubt Nintendo has likely examined many possible chips at this point, however, and this is a disclaimer, these are both totally unconfirmed and subject to change, but they will give Nintendo the range of processing power needed to be around the level of an Xbox Series S or perhaps a tad better in some areas. Remember as well, the Xbox Series S is a four teraflops console versus the 2016 PlayStation 4 Pro, which is a 4.2 teraflops console, yet it has features and games that can't run on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Keep that in mind, since this will be a running theme as we move forward. So first up, we have the Nvidia Tegra T239 chip, which has been rumored to be what is running Switch 2 ever since mid-2021, almost three years ago. And recently, there has been a deep dive by Digital Foundry and Eurogamer going over what would be theoretically possible on this chip, with some very interesting results. But more recently, there has been an update to their analysis just a few weeks ago that leaves more and more questions about if this is really the chip Nintendo will use even if it is the most reported and rumored chip. It was revealed that the T239 chip does not actually have Nvidia's deep learning accelerator which would have given the Switch 2's SoC essentially free DLSS with no hit to performance. But as you can see from this diagram I'm showing here, it may not have been a viable method to use that due to the cost and the increased size of the chip or MCM, which stands for multi-core module, since these chips that the T239 are derived from were designed for robotics and driverless cars with Nvidia's Jetson AI modules running it. So with no deep learning accelerator, the T239 wouldn't be able to produce any content using DLSS at 4K. Despite rumors from VGC saying that Switch 2 was running an Unreal Engine 5 Matrix demo at 4K with DLSS, which in turn that report was said as being false by Nintendo President Furukawa shortly after that, which is very interesting since from a tech standpoint, the T239 not being able to produce 4K DLSS actually supports Furukawa's statement, doesn't it? But the questions regarding T239 don't actually end there. Since it's well known that the fabrication process for these Jetson or an SOCs are built on an 8 nanometer process, and the reason why they are built on an 8 nanometer process is because they are not actually designed for any portable gaming consoles. 
So regardless of all those interesting questions, however, it is possible that the Switch 2 is still using some form of the T239 chip in another form factor. The most widely assumed is a Samsung 4 nanometer SoC, which would be a completely customized version that probably will look very different from what Nvidia is using for their Jetson or an AI modules. But not only that, since it doesn't have any DLA, Deep Learning Accelerator, it would need to use DLSS as it is, which in turn will take a much larger hit to performance to switch to games, which would have been no performance hit if they would have had that DLA. So looking back on the past year, it now starts to make more and more sense as to why possibly Nintendo may have chosen to use their own custom variant of DLSS with that neural network patent we saw back in early 2023. If Nintendo had its own method of AI upscaling to 4K that works better for their needs in terms of performance than using DLSS, which now might not be their best option, even if it is possible to use DLSS at 1080p and 1440p on the T239, putting this all together paints a much clearer picture of the possible path Nintendo is going for AI upscaling and could explain why Furukawa said the reports were false while some very credible people and devs connected to development of Switch 2 claimed that it was a 4K DLS demo they saw, they might have been making an assumption from the eyes on demo but not stating a fact on how Nintendo was getting the images to look so impressive. Also, Nintendo was actually hiring for PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Onyx Runtime for machine learning, which we brought out in my last Switch 2 video. Onyx is open source and so is PyTorch and TensorFlow. So while some may have assumed that this hiring confirmed DLSS, it actually more so confirms Nintendo's working on AI upscaling using machine learning with their own custom tools and further confirms what we were discussing in my last Switch 2 video a few weeks ago. Now, another option would be, based on all the factual information and data we shared in regards to Nintendo's Switch 1 deal with Nvidia, it's entirely possible Nintendo recently over the last couple years decided to take a deal from Samsung since they'd likely be making Switch 2 regardless of if Nintendo chose a chip from Nvidia or not, and Samsung has had some issues with their Exynos chips and yield quality and are looking for a vendor to use either their skipped Exynos 2300 chip or their new 2400 variant in a volume production deal since they already have it lined up for their Samsung Galaxy S24 smartphone, which will be powered by the Samsung Eclipse 940 GPU and ARM Cortex X4 CPU. From recent estimates, this would give very similar results, possibly Possibly even better even than the Tegra T239 processor. And the key part is, Samsung already is making this chip in production and it would be very very easy for a deal to be made as part of a package to Nintendo to simply make Switch 2's SoC based on the Exynos 2400 with likely customizations to the GPU IP, possibly applying things Nintendo would want on the chip, like more memory for example to be used to take advantage of higher clock speeds while docked. Now, I talked about in another video that Samsung also was a partner with Nvidia, so it's entirely possible that if Nintendo made a deal with Nvidia already, that they could fabricate the GPU IP from the T239 chip and put it into the Exynos form factor with the same CPU, and then you'd have your customized Samsung SoC at 4 nanometers powered by Nvidia. However, it could still be what Samsung is already producing for the Exynos, and that would end up being an RDNA 3 GPU IP. Now, as we know, it would appear that backwards compatibility is very likely for Switch 2, but as others have pointed out, the Tegra X1 is almost 10 years old now, and regardless if Switch 2 is running a new Nvidia chip or the off chance it's running a Samsung RDNA chip, Either way, Switch 2 will still need to run a software layer of emulation of some sort to get Switch 1 games running and if they add improvements to graphics, even more so they need software to emulate the console on Switch 2. So the point is, this actually widens the possibilities of the Switch 2 SoC having more modern GPU options than just one type of chip due to how outdated the Tegra X1 actually is. So on the screen here, I've listed the specs of the Switch 2 in two different possible choices for SoC. 
CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage. The teraflops, RAM, and storage are my estimated ranges, but the NVIDIA parts are largely based on Universal Nintendo's article they published on Switch 2 specs that they claim is rumored to closely be what was on Switch 2 dev kit. So honestly, these are just speculation, but I've adjusted it to show my own estimates here. We don't know the actual clock speed ranges of Switch 2 CPU or GPU yet, so that is why you are seeing a range of teraflops instead of a set number for both portable and docked mode. I said before in live streams that 1.5 teraflops in portable mode and 3 teraflops in dock mode would likely be the lowest Switch 2 would be in order to run new games. Keeping in mind that as we said before, the numbers will be very deceiving due to it being new tech. New architecture and new APIs running Switch 2 and 1.5 to 3 teraflops in 2024 versus 2013 1.5 to 3 teraflops is a completely different ball game and you just can't compare the numbers like that at this point. Also, 2.5 to 5 teraflops would be the absolute maximum I think they could pull off, especially if it's a 4 nanometer process, the heat and power consumption would be small enough to warrant a pretty big upclock while docked, so getting those numbers could actually be possible, and would make it a bit better than the Xbox Series S while docked by a small margin. However, I will say at this point guys, this is my absolute best possible speculation on what Nintendo is doing with Switch 2 and expects. Either way, I think the console is going to be hitting above its weight on paper, so we just need that big reveal to finally see the games in action to make that final judgment. Now, next up, we have a new report by Bloomberg talking about Switch 2 having an 8-inch LCD screen and the console being targeted for holiday 2024, with possibly 10 million ready to ship for the fiscal year based on screen production. And this isn't really new information per se, since it was rumored last year that Switch 2 would have an 8-inch LCD screen, but it's the first time it's been reported by Bloomberg, which gives it more weight, I'd say, than just another rumor. Even though Bloomberg Switch 2 reporting has been hit or miss for years, you can still list it as a credible, but overall a rumor until Nintendo announces Switch 2. I've seen various people disappointed by this report, but we have to remember that we haven't seen the console yet and we don't actually know what type of LCD screen it will be. And keep in mind that IPS LCDs, which is what Steam Deck uses, do look a lot better with deeper blacks and better colors than standard LCD screens and are a lot cheaper these days than they were before. So while yes, I could see why people wanting an OLED display being a bit disappointed, overall I don't think it will affect anyone from buying Switch 2 day one once they see the dramatically improved looking games running on it, especially say Metroid Prime 4, right? Either way, you can bet Switch 2 is gonna be sold out on day one, so make sure you get your pre-order money ready for that. Now lastly, we have a new feature for Switch 2 that is basically confirmed as real, and this was first discovered by Nash Weedle as a patent Nintendo's working on. And normally these days I don't cover patents, but this one is backed up by Nintendo themselves hiring for the same thing on their job page. And the patent shows a multimedia app that will allow users to select various forms of content, including mentioning anime in the patent, which means that this is some kind of entertainment app for movies and TV shows. And then when you go over to Nintendo's job page, they just so happen to be hiring for multimedia technologies, including streaming apps for a massively used gaming console. So it seems like this is confirmation that Nintendo will be using Switch 2 for more than just games, and they'll have an easy to use all-in-one app to watch your movies or various subscription service that you have access to. But it seems like Nintendo is looking to make this a substantial upgrade over Switch 1 by including all these things and if backwards compatibility is also included as it would appear, then the rumored price of $400 would really feel like a much better value I'd say overall. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for this video. We had a ton of information to go over and I really wanna thank you very, very much for all your support and a great start to 2024. Please let me know your thoughts about all this exciting information in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.